The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Zechariah, his father, filled with the Holy Spirit, prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his prophets, the pro he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat, mga kapatid. Good morning. Pakibati nga ang katabi natin ng good morning, a blessed morning, brothers and sisters. At gayon din po sa ating mga kasama sa ating online, ang ating mga online parishioners. Sabi ng mga kabataan, finally. Finally, we are here. We are able to reach the ninth day of our Novena Masses in preparation for Christmas, our nine Misa de Gallios. Sa akin pong mga travels, riding um, sa aeroplano, ang favorite part ko po ng pagsakay sa aeroplano ay hindi po yung mga entertainment, mga movies, or even yung pagkain. And I particularly hate the turbulence. Ang favorite part ko po ng pagsakay sa aeroplano, always, it never fails to excite me. No? Ang aking puso ay talagang uh, na, nagiging mabilis ang heartbeat pag sinabi na ho ng FA na, o ng pilot yata nagsasabi nito, cabin crew, prepare for landing. Pag dyan na po ang sinabi, ang sarap ng feeling. Prepare for landing. Ang sarap ng pakiramdam when you're about to land, when you're about to end your journey, and when you're about to reach your destination. So congratulations. We have landed. We have reached the ninth day. Pakisabi nga sa katabi mo, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas sa ating lahat. Sa inyo pong nasa ating online mass, Merry Christmas sa inyong lahat. We have made it. Wait, there's more. We go back, we have a little recap of what we have gone through in our little journey. Our nine steps of grace or nine mornings of grace and nine steps to a blessed Christmas. We go back, kung if you would allow me, para lang ma mabuod natin yung atin pong siyam na madaling araw na pagtatsyaga. Step one, we said, empty your heart. Bakit po ito ang binanggit natin? Why do we need to empty our heart? Kasi ang gospel po noon, if you remember, Jesus was talking to the Jews. And the Jews were reminded by Jesus John was a shining light before you. He was a lamp that guided you, but only for a while. You believe in the testimony of John, but there is a testimony greater than John here. In other words, 
in the first morning, the gospel was about John must, in, must decrease and Jesus must increase. In every journey, we have to deload. We have to travel light. We must not be full of ourselves and think that we can bring everything with us. We must travel light. We must decrease. We must empty our heart. On the second day, we said, forgive your past. Why? Because we reflected and meditated on the genealogy of Jesus. We look back to the ancestors of Jesus. And of course, the history of Jesus was also full of many sinners as well as saints. Many tragic events in the past as well as good events. Life is like that. It's a combination of highs and lows. But we must forgive the past if we are to move forward. Step three, we said, never stop dreaming. Why? Because we meditated on the dream of St. Joseph. On step four, we said, believe in God's promise. Because the gospel then was about Zechariah and Elizabeth. And now, the last day we reflect again, we go back to Zechariah. And we said in step four, in the names of Zechariah, Elizabeth, and John, you already see the whole story of Advent. Elizabeth, Elishava, God makes a promise. Zechariah, Zechariah, God remembers. And Yehohanan, God is gracious. Step five, we said, just say yes. Why? Because we meditated on the Magnificat on the Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel to Mary. When the Angel Gabriel announced to Mary that she would be the mother of the Son of God, and Mary, she just said yes. Step six, we said, in order to find joy, we must share joy. Why? Because we meditated on the visitation of Mary from Nazareth to Ein Karem, the house of Elizabeth and Zechariah. Step seven, we said, we are all graced and gifted, so we must always show our gratitude and show this in our generosity. Why? Because we meditated on the Magnificat of Mary, the Song of Mary, my soul proclaims and magnifies the Lord. Step eight, we said, ready your heart, on your mark, ready, get set. Not yet go, but we say ready. Why? Because we again went back to a meditation on John the Baptist as the new Elijah. He prepares the way for the coming of the Lord. All these steps, friends, they are not arbitrary. These are steps that we have called from the scriptures. They are not my words. They are not my steps. They are steps that we can learn from the Gospels themselves, from the readings we have heard. If we just follow this, we would have a better and blessed Christmas. Because they are not my words. They are not my points. They are not my suggestions. They come from our readings and celebrations of the Eucharist and the Word. So now, we go to step nine. The last point. If you're familiar with the 12 days of Christmas, yung kanta po, on the first day of Christmas. Yeah. I think everyone is familiar with that. Sa history, sa kasaysayan ng kantang ito, they're not just ordinary images of birds and objects and whatnot. They were all catechetical instructions for the Christians at that time. Twelve days of Christmas, twelve, twelve apostles, eleven, ten, ten, uh, commandments, nine, eight, eight Beatitudes, five, six, seven, all of these have meanings and significance. So, our nine steps also have the same significance. We go to the ninth step. And we heard about the canticle of Zechariah. We call this the Benedictus. If Mary has a Magnificat, glorifying God for everything that he has done in her life, 
Zechariah has his own version of the Magnificat. We call it the Benedictus, the blessings, the canticle of Zechariah. Step nine, we borrow from St. Padre Pio. Because this is the essence and the message of the Benedictus of Zechariah. St. Padre Pio would say, Pray, hope, do not worry. This is the ninth step. Pray, hope, do not worry. Because in the Benedictus of Zechariah, he is describing the struggles of his people. Kanyang binaybay, kanyang binalikan ang kwento ng kanyang bayan. Ang pangako ng Diyos kay Abraham, ang pangako ng Diyos kay David, ang pag-asang binigay ng Diyos sa Israel, sa piniling bayan ng Diyos. Na aalisin ang kanilang takot, aalisin ang kanilang pangamba, na ibababa ang mga mayayabang at ang mga mapagmataas at bibigyan ng liwanag ang mga nasa kadiliman. And the last part of the Benedictus is the most beautiful part because that is the whole point of the response of Zechariah. After being muted for nine months, pinarusahan si Zechariah ng siyam na buwan in eight days to be exact na hindi siya nakapagsalita. Bakit? Kasi hindi siya naniniwala sa sinabi ng anghel sa kaniya. The silence of Zechariah is symbolic of the 400 years more or less of the silence of God that after the prophet Malachi, God did not communicate to his people anymore, at least through the prophets, but God still guided them all throughout their journey. So finally, after nine months, Zechariah is able to speak and he says, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Let us unpack this. This is the most beautiful part of the Benedictus of Zechariah. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Sa awa at habag ng Diyos sa atin, nagbubukang liwayway ang liwanag. Hinahawi ng bukang liwayway ang dilim ng gabi. It is said that it is darkest before dawn. And it's true. Before the first light comes, it is the darkest moment of the night. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn breaks the darkness to shine on those who dwell in darkness and those in the shadow of death. The dawn from on high breaks the darkness in those that are living under the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The mercy of God, the hesed of God, the rahamim of God, the mercy and compassion of our God will guide our feet into the way of peace. We have made our nine steps and we thought these are our steps, but not exactly. These are not our steps because the one who guides our feet as we move along is the mercy and compassion of God. The Lord remembers. That is why at the end of the nine mornings, we are given the person of Zechariah. Bakit, di ba, pag sa dulo, dapat di ba ang bida ang, na, ang nakikita natin? The main actor should take the bow last. Bakit si Zechariah? Minor figure or character lang naman siya sa Pasko. Pero bakit siya ang huli sa siyam na madaling araw na ito? Kasi gustong iparamdam ng Diyos sa iyo at sa akin, we are the new Zecharias of our time. Zechariah was a man filled with 
despair, with shame, with guilt, because he was a priest of God. At that time, pwede pang mag-asawa ang pare because it was the temple and it was their, it was their culture. Remember Zechariah's situation. Ikaw ay pare na malapit sa Diyos, pero hindi ka binigyan ng blessing ng isang anak. Tumanda na kayo't lahat, hindi man lang kayo nabigyan ng blessing. Kinalimutan kayo ng Diyos, pinarusahan kayo ng Diyos. At nung nagbigyan ka na ng mabuting balita, anong ginawa ng Diyos sa iyo? Hindi ka pinagsalita. Matanda ka na, hindi ka pa marunong at hindi ka pa makapagsalita. So the figure of Zechariah represents all of us who are living in despair, in darkness, in our muted silence of tears. We are like Zechariah, living in shame, in guilt, in fear, in anxiety. At marami po ako nakausap this past nine mornings in nine simbang gabi. Napakarami ko pong nakausap and I'm very honored and so blessed to hear such stories both from our online parishioners and from people who I interact with in the little time that I have been here in the parish. Just a few of those stories. After my Mass in one of our Simbang Gabi and Misa de Gallo, someone approached me very gently. She embraced me, si Lola. I didn't know why she would embrace me so tight. Siguro tingin niya sa akin na ako'y apo niya na matagal nang nawawala. But I love it when she embraced me so tight. And she whispered to me in the midst of the many people around us, she whispered to my ear, It could be my last Christmas, Father. This could be my last Christmas. And I would, lug, I would like to hug you. I was taken aback because I was joking around. Kasi masaya ang atmosphere. Sabi ko sa kanya, Lola, pantayan ha. Last Christmas, I give you. So binibiro-biro ko siya. I went, no father, it could be my last Christmas. And she told me, because I am at the end stage of my life, in my fourth stage of my cancer, the doctor already told me, make the most out of it. This could be your last. People living in darkness, the death hangs on your head, the anxiety and worry, this could be the last. Another came to me and told me again, they come to me in whispers. Another guy, after my mass, came to me and again whispering to my ear, Father, I'm losing my eyesight. I can relate to what you said in one of your homilies about this baby losing his, her eyesight or his eyesight. I too am in that situation. Progressively, nabubulag na po ako. And I just want to tell you, this could also be my last Christmas of seeing things around me. So many stories of people that are in darkness. And another guy coming to me, again whispering, Father, pray for my family. This could be a very sad Christmas for us because we are finally deciding to separate. I have made a decision and we have made a mutual decision that this would be the last Christmas that we would be together for the sake of the children. But we have made up our mind, this is going to be the last. We cannot stay any longer together. Marami sa atin na nagsasabi, maybe in one way or another, you're saying to yourself, this is the last Christmas of my life. And who could fault them for that? of losing hope, of being in despair in your life. Zechariah was like that. 
He has all but given up on everything. That's why he did not believe the angel. Because he has given up hoping. He has given up believing. He was a priest at the altar of God, offering sacrifices, offering prayers, but he did not believe anymore. Because there was just no hope already. There was nothing anymore for him and for Elizabeth. And yet, the dawn from on high breaks the darkness. And they had John. I say to these people who are saying to themselves, this could be my last. It ain't over till it's over. And even if it's over, it's not yet the end. Akala natin yung nine steps, this would be with finality. Akala ho natin, pagkatapos ng siyam na madaling araw, naandyan na yung answered prayer. Akala ho natin, pagka nagsakripisyo tayo ng matagal, ay tapos na ang ating paghihintay. Not at all. These are steps. And steps that do not end. Again, I go back to Carl Runner. For some of you who have been following me, I quote this, and I, I, I believe in this strongly. In the torment of the insufficiency of everything attainable in this world, we come to realize that here in this life, all melodies remain unfinished. All symphonies remain unfinished. There is that torment of the insufficiency of everything attainable in our life. Even if we have reached the nine mornings, it's not yet the end. We have just started. Life is like a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon that goes on and on and on. Don't think about finality. Don't think about the final step. No. We are just starting. And in fact, tonight, if you come back tonight, I'll tell you the next chapter of the story. But for now, let us finish this. Yes, there is finality in the nine mornings, but that is not over and the story doesn't end here. And so Padre Pio tells us, pray. Prayer is not an activity or an obligation that you have to do. Prayer is a relationship that you establish with God. When Padre Pio said, pray, he does not mean to say you kneel down and do an activity for God. You do not just sing a song for God, honor and worship Him with your words or your actions or your gestures. No. Prayer for Padre Pio is an intimacy and a relationship with God. And that's what God wants us to do in this Christmas or in our celebrations for that matter. To be intimate with God, to pray. So this is my final Final message and perhaps point to all of us this Christmas. Pray. Find time to pray. Because in prayer, in the silence of our heart, in the whisperings in our ears of the angel and the voice of God, we will hear, it is not your last Christmas at all. It is not yet the end for you. And so, dear friends, we pray and we hope. We hope because the Lord leads us. He guides our feet into the way of peace. He guides our journey into the final destination. And our final landing is not here in this world. If at all this life could end here and now, tomorrow or when, it is not the end. Pray, hope, do not worry as Padre Pio would say, pray, hope, do not worry. Worry is useless. God is merciful. God listens to our prayers. And when Padre Pio says, God listens to our prayers, he's not, he doesn't mean to say that you get everything you want and you get everything you request from God. That is not prayer. That is not answered prayer. When Padre Pio says, pray, hope, do not worry, God will listen to your prayers. What he means to say is, continue the journey. Continue your relationship with God because He continues to open doors for you. He discloses many, many insights, new insights and learnings to you as you go along. Nine steps, that's not the end. We are just starting, my dear friends. In the torment of the insufficiency of everything attainable, we come to realize that here in this world, life remains unfinished. 
all symphonies remain unfinished. Mga kapatid, for all of you who are living in, wor in worries, in, in darkness, it is not yet the end. Pray, hope, do not worry. Hindi pa ho tapos ang kwento. Hindi pa ho tapos ang Diyos sa atin. Patuloy pa rin siyang umahabi ng kwento sa atin. Hindi pa tapos. Wag. Wag sumuko kahit na walang laman ang ang uh, major sa harap natin mamayang gabi magkakaroon na yan kahit parang walang nangyayari sa ating puso at pamilya sa ngayon wag mag-alala pupunuin ng Diyos ang kakulangan dulugtungan ng Diyos ang ating mga paglalakbay ng kanyang biyaya so brothers and sisters let us learn from Padre Pio on this night morning Pray, hope. Hope is what we cling to. And hope is not an aspiration for the future. Hope is a person. And his name is Jesus, God who saves. So pray, hope, do not worry. And let me end with this prayer from, Saint, from, from this spiritual writer, Thomas Merton, one of my favorites also. Pray with me in silence as I pray the prayer of Thomas Merton, his prayer of abandonment. Thomas Merton says, My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. But I know. I know you will lead me you will take me by the hand and you will lead me by the right road. Though I may know nothing about it, therefore I will trust you always. Though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear for you are ever with me and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on us who dwell in darkness, to shine on us who are facing the shadow of death. And He will guide us. He will guide our feet into the way of peace, of joy, of love, and hope. Pray, hope, do not worry. God remembers. God is true to His promise. Muli ay congratulations sa ating lahat na nakasyam na Misa de Gallo. Palakpakan nga natin ang ating mga sarili. But let us not be complacent about it. This is not an achievement. These are steps. The journey continues. We must move eagerly as our closing prayer tells us. As our salvation draws ever nearer, let us press forward all the more eagerly. I hope to see you tonight for our Midnight Mass. Let us continue the story of Jesus. Let us witness the unfolding of the mystery of the love of God shown in Jesus' incarnation and Jesus' birth in the manger. So, friends, this is not your last Christmas. Not ever. This is just the beginning of our lives, the beginning of our journey with Jesus. And especially, let us journey with the Holy Family as a family also. So maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga nagtsaga sa ating Sham na Misa de Gallo, ang ating po mga online parishioners na nagtsaga din kasama natin. At I'm just overwhelmed again, again and again I say to you, I'm overwhelmed all the time kasi... Uh, nakuha na po natin, makakapagpakain po tayo, makapagbibigay po tayo ng pamaskong handog sa 500 families this year and more. Nagugulat po ako sa inyo pong community. I'm just, you know, 
<laughs> Kayo na po talaga. Uh, limang daang pamilya po ang ating mabibigyan ng pamaskong handog and more. Uh, as they come, as our uh, sponsors come, I am very grateful and honored to witness all this generosity around us at ganyan din sa ating mga iba pang programa. So once again, it's a blessed Christmas to all of us, not because we have gifts or we are able to give gifts. We have a blessed Christmas because we have Jesus. It's all there is to it. Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. With Jesus, we have everything. Merry Christmas ulit sa inyo lahat and see you tonight. Meron po kaming sorpresa sa inyo mamaya. Uh, abangan nyo na lang po dahil meron kang ipamimigay sa inyo mamaya. If you are here, pag wala kayo, absent kayo, ipagdadasal na lang namin po kayo. <laughs> so, thank you very much everyone. Let us all stand. I'd like to pray for you, especially the families who are like the family of Zechariah and Elizabeth who, who are going through some darkness, some dark period in your life. You are living under the shadow of death, under the valley of disease and sickness. We pray for you. Bow your head for God's blessing as well as those who are with us online. If your family is going through some troubles, some strong winds and typhoon or storm in your life, I pray for you. Lord, I ask you to bless all our families who are in the valley of darkness, the valley of death, all those who are struggling in their family life, all those who are struggling in dealing with sickness and diseases. I pray for all of you who are struggling in your workplace or finding work. I pray for all of you who are going through severe trials and hardships in your life, adversities that are so hard to face. For all of you who are about to give up, for all of you who are hopeless and in despair, it's not over. The Lord blesses you. The Lord remembers. May you always take into heart the words of Padre Pio. Pray, hope, do not worry. May you always remember the words of Zechariah. The dawn from on high shall break upon you and your family. The Most High will remember you. The Most High will not forsake or forget you. And may our loving God bless you and your family this Christmas time. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our ninth Misa de Gallo, our nine mornings are ended. We go in peace and let us continue our journey to the manger. Go on. On we go to Bethlehem with Joseph and Mary. Thanks be to God. <laughs>